This segment brought to you by Hope Cancer Care of Nevada, offering state-of-the-art cancer treatment in Pahrump. A little hope goes a long way. Welcome back. A new court date has been scheduled for a trial in a fatal accident case. In this week's court report, yet another new trial date is set for Ashley Wynn. She's the Pahrump woman who was arrested following a fatal DUI crash at Honeysuckle and South Dandelion Street that killed a bride-to-be and injured her fiancé. Wynn's previously set trial start date that was set for June 2018 has now been pushed to next year. This revelation comes after Wynn's recent motion to continue jury trial. During that proceeding, Wynn's attorney, Adam Vander Hayden, outlined the case history and states that the defense is ready to proceed with trial. However, Patrick Ferguson, who was for some unspecified reason present that day for the state, stated that this case is Mike Vieta Cabell's and he is requesting to continue Wynn's trial for a year. Subsequently, the court sets a status check for February 4th, 2019 to set trial dates. Additionally, the court recalls this matter and notes that Mike Vieta Cabell is present for the state. Then all case parties state when they will be ready to proceed with trial. So the court set wins trial dates for June 24th, 2019 with a calendar call on May 20th, 2019. Notably, Wynn has remained at liberty while she awaits her trial. She's facing the formal charges of DUI causing death and DUI causing bodily harm. Robert Samuel Behrens also recently in court for a status check pre-motions motion to strike proceeding. Behrens is the Perrant man who was arrested after inquiring if NCSO Sergeant David Barukowitz would accept money to look the other way while the suspect grew marijuana in Amargosa Valley illegally. Behrens, who was present at Liberty for his previous court proceeding, was notably present in custody for his status check during which the court calls one of Barron's cases a status check on evaluation from Lakes Crossing and calls Barron's other case an arraignment hearing. Barron's attorney, Harry Gensler, briefs the record request and requests new evaluation on Barron's second case. The DA concurs, so the court orders a new competency evaluation. Then Gensler makes an oral motion for an OR release, but it was denied by the court. Barron's pleaded not guilty during his arraignment to the burglary and bribery charges he's facing in one of his district court cases. This has been your court report. I'm Unette Gentry for News 46. Thanks so much, Unette. Musician Jerry Atkins has been serving the community for years. A special luncheon was well attended in her honor at the Artesia Clubhouse. Oh, it's been a beautiful, beautiful celebration that all of my friends, family, and the clergy and the people of Pahrump have turned out. And I am so, so happy. My brother is here from Phoenix, Arizona, and my family. And it's just been fantastic today. I've enjoyed it. Oh, we don't have enough time in the day to tell you how proud I am of my sister. She is a beautiful soul, beautiful person. And she exemplifies the, the word that, that God gave me to preach today. She is truly a blessing and all she wants to do. You guys sang together six kids? We sang, we, yes, we have sang together ever since I was a baby. <laughs> and uh, uh, the group, the turn, it used to be the Turner family or the Turner group. And uh, actually, it was the Turner sisters, yeah. but I was the only brother that was in the church. <laughs> like, what the heck? Yeah, but it's all of my life we've been. Are you still involved in the music? Yes, I am a national recording artist. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, three CDs out, working on my four. Uh, Reverend Julian Turner, and uh, it's all in the um, social media and media. Uh, Amazon, iTunes, all of my music is there. Everybody can find you out there. From a little girl, I wanted to sing with them so badly, they wouldn't let me sing because they, they said I sang too loud <laughs> and I couldn't hold my part. So my father begged them and I had one of my elder sisters say, well, I'll help you. And Jerry always said, you better keep your part if you're going to sing with us. <laughs> 
a choir director. I've been a minister of music practically all my life. And I have had some very, very spiritual people to guide me in this direction. James Cleveland, for one, was my mentor. He's the one that's kind of inspired me to go further and further. My sister is my baby sister. She, is a, she was a writer, producer, and composer at Motown. And we just have a great gospel family and music throughout. It's a wonderful event. Were you surprised? Did they let you know about this happening? They had to let me know in a little bit. They wanted to surprise me, but they had to get some addresses, and they didn't have addresses or phone numbers, so they had to come to me for them. <laughs> so that was a surprise. It's a wonderful event. Thanks for all you do in this community. You're going to continue for years to come. Continue for years to come. Anybody needs Jerry, I'm there. All right. That looks like a great event. And we have more information about other entertainment, including the Kiwanis Club and what they're up to after this break.